So this question we're asked to calculate the compressor outlet pressure and temperature, the combustor outlet temperature, and the nozzle outlet temperature and useful work for a unchoked pure turbojet that consumes 100 kilograms per second of air. We're told that combined unit and compressor has a compression ratio of 10 to 1, and the fuel that is being burned in the combustor at a rate of 1.18 per second. The compressor and turbine are considered to have an isentropic efficiency of 85% and we're giving the ambient uh, air and temperature and some other assumptions. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin by getting the compressor outlet pressure. So what are we told? We're told that the compression ratio is 10 is to 1 and we're told that the mass of fuel is 1.1 kilograms per second and that the compressor and turbine have efficiency of 85 percent and that the pressure here p1 the ambient pressure is 101 kilopascals and that the temperature is 15 degrees celsius which turns out to be 288 degrees Kelvin. all right so we want to get the output pressure so p2 is going to be 10 times the inlet pressure so P2 is 10 times P1, which is 1010 kilopascals. And we want to get the outlet temperature. So the temperature here at station 2. T2 is uh, equal to T1 times 1 plus the pressure ratio for the gamma minus 1 all over gamma minus 1, all over the efficiency of the compressor. When we plug in the values, we get the temperature to be 603 degrees Kelvin. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, issues with that. So the next part of the question is the combustor outlet temperature. So uh, in the combustion can, we have um, air coming in, and then we're going to add some heat to it, and then it comes out at the end of the uh, end of the combustion can. So if we go back to the steady state energy equation. So in the combustion can, we have some um, heat added. So we have some heat. We don't do any work in it. So that disappears. We assume there is no change in velocity. And we assume there is no change in height between the uh, in, inlet and outlet of the, of the combustion can. So basically what we're saying is that the heat energy is going to equal to the change in enthalpy. But uh, when, we're, uh, when we're burning uh, in the combustion can, we're adding in fuel. So we're putting fuel in here, and we're told that we're burning 1.18 kilograms per second. And we're also told that fuel has a calorific value of, or a heating value of 43 megajoules per kilogram. So what it's saying here is that for every kilogram of fuel we burn, we get 43 megajoules of energy. So that means that um, the heat in is going to be equal to the change in enthalpy, and enthalpy is m times Cp, T3 minus T2, okay, from the output to the input, the change in from output to input. And the heat in is going to be the mass of fuel times the uh, heating value of fuel. So these are all going to be equal to each other. When we plug in the values, we get 1.1 kilograms of fuel by the 43 megajoules uh, per kilogram. The mass of air, we were told, was 100 kgs. And we're given Cp of air, and we had calculated T2. So when we do all of that, uh, we get T3 to be uh, 1,108 uh, degrees Kelvin. Okay, for the next part of the question, we're asked to get the nozzle outlet temperature. Okay, so if we uh, begin with this equation, and just... Uh, multiply both sides by T3, we can see that ideally, so in an ideal world, 
the temperature here at station uh, four will be equal to T3 times the pressure ratio from T4 to T3, the gamma minus one all over gamma. So uh, I'll plug in the values. So T3 is 1,108. We just calculated that. T4, well, um, we were told that the um, nozzle was unchoked. That means that the pressure here is going to be the same as uh, the pressure uh, at station one, the ambient pressure. So we were told that's 101 uh, kilopascals. Uh, P3, well, we don't know what P3 is, but we were calculated, sorry, we calculated P2 to be 101 kilopascals. And this is the combustion section here of the brake cycle. And it's a constant pressure cycle. So P2 and P3, we're going to assume are exactly the same. Okay, so they're the same value. So P3 is equal to P3 is equal to P2. Just, uh, just there. So gamma. Uh, so we have air coming through the, the compressor, and then we have air and fuel uh, burning. So in in the turbine and nozzle area, we have a mixture of air and fuel. So the uh, ratio of specific heat is going to be slightly different. So it's going to change from 1.4 to, in this case, uh, 1.33. Uh, so we're going to plug that 1.33 in here. So when we do that, um, we get a value for the ideal value, T4, to be 626 degrees Kelvin. All right, the efficiency of the turbine is equal to the actual T4 minus T3, so the um, output minus the input, over ideally what the temperature would be minus the actual T3. So when I plug the values in, I just cross multiply first, so multiply both sides first by T4 prime minus T3, and then I bring in T3 across to get T4, I plug the values in, and when I do that, I get T4 to be uh, 698 degrees Kelvin. The final part of this question was to work out the, uh, the useful uh, work. So, um, going back to the, to the Brayton cycle, you know, this is the work done to compress the air in the compressor. And the compressor, so this is the compressor here. The compressor is driven by the turbine. So the work to drive the compressor comes from the turbine. So it comes from this, this part here. So that that's used to to drive the um, to drive the compressor. What remains then comes out the back, and that's what propels. Okay, so this energy here is used to drive the compressor. What remains then is used to propel the aircraft, and we call that the useful work. So the useful work really is. The total work on the turbine, which is, or the turbine and nozzle, I should say, this value here, so that's WT, that's work from the turbine. So when we subtract the work from the compressor, this guy here, we should be left with the useful work. So the useful work is the work in the turbine minus the work in the compressor. So the work in the turbine. is the change in end we're going to neglect the change in kinetic energy and, um, and potential energy so the work on the turbine is the change in enthalpy at the turbine minus
is the change in um, enthalpy at the um, at the compressor. Now you might be saying, well, this should be T4 minus T3, and you would be right. It should be T4 minus T3. But if I if I did that, I would get a negative answer, and we just want to take the absolute value. So um, cheated a little bit by just making the higher value first to the 1108, so I don't get a negative answer. Okay, because it, it's irrespective of what taken out or, or put in. I just want what's the absolute value of the work in the turbine and what's the absolute value of the work done in the compressor. Okay, so the mass of air going through the turbine uh, nozzle, where well, we we're told there's 100 kilograms of air coming through. But we're also burning 1.18 kilograms per second. So coming through here would be the mass of the air plus the mass of the burnt fuel. So that's 101.18 kilograms per second. The specific heat capacity of the air and the and the burnt gas is um, 1.14 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's 1,140 uh, joules per kilogram. T3 we calculated as 1108, T4 is 698, the mass of air is 100, the specific heat capacity of air was uh, 1005 joules per kilogram, T2 we calculated to be 603, T1 we calculated to be 288. So when we multiply that out and do our subtractions, we get the useful work is equal to 15.6 megajoules.